It's Pastor Dave. Hello. Deaconess Heidi. We're here for Jesus on the Fly again. Today we're going to keep moving through Matthew. And Pastor Dave, what what chapter and verse are we looking at? Chapter 5, verse 17 is where we're starting. I think we're just going to do to verse 20. Okay. Looks good. Chapter 5, 17 through 20 of the book of Matthew. All right. What... Does it say? Uh, the header is Christ came to fulfill the law. That was not inspired by the Holy Spirit. but <laughs> The law, though. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. It says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be, ex will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh. <laughs> That's hardcore. Wow. <laughs> I think it's funny how I think these passages get lost so often because they they feel like like the middle like like oh Jesus is getting to something else you know mm -hmm. it's, it's so it's interesting to look at it just by itself and be like okay what is Jesus saying here about the law and what we need to do because it is tempting to be like and I am super guilty of this like freedom in Christ like whatever you know whatever goes and and that is there is some truth to that in our Christian walk Mm -hmm. But there's also this passage that tells us we better not get rid of the law, and we also better not tell our neighbor to get rid of the law. So what do we do with that, Pastor Dave? Um, you know, I have to preach sermons all the time, so I and I, I get to. So <laughs> I'm working on this sermon right now, and it's about like how essentially we just do whatever we want, and. I think that's some of what the Pharisees were doing was actually creating some systems where they could tell people to do whatever they want. Um, and they were, you know, the things that were really important that God was really the heart and the spirit of the commandments were, it, that wasn't important to them. It was more like these... I don't know. They were they just lost the what the commandments were really about. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a there's a book a Bible study I did a women's Bible study that's called the Law of Love, and it really wrestles with that balance of like the fact that the law does exist and we're not supposed to just get rid of it um, or uh, create systems within it and around it, kind of like the Pharisees were mm -hmm. doing. Um, but we also have a different vantage point of it because of Jesus and like the, the uninspired heading, like that he fulfills it. So we mm -hmm. still value it. Um, and we have to hold those two things together, like the absolute gospel that God fulfills it through Jesus. And we don't have to um, be perfect, you know, and follow mm -hmm. the law perfectly. But God still values the law. So we value the law, you know. Right. Yeah. We we definitely still, you know, try to live Christian lives that were that are holy as much as we can. Um and uh we still, you know, obey the commandments. You know, it's not like, oh, well Jesus came, so now we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> we yeah. just do whatever we want, you know. Yeah. I think one of the um, problems with that attitude <clears throat> is it doesn't work for our neighbor. Like it might work for us even because we're saved and it's not going to change our salvation. Um, although, you know, we'll, we might spiral into like the pit of sin that we've set up for ourselves if we ignore the Ten Commandments entirely. Mm -hmm. But I think more than that, one thing Jesus helps us to know is that it's not loving your neighbor at all. Um, because like your neighbor, if they see your life and it doesn't mirror anything that's good of Jesus Christ, then they being outside of belief, I think have a really hard time making sense of that. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? They, right. They're like, wait a minute. Essentially being a hypocrite is yeah, not it, helpful. Right. You know, which is exactly what the Pharisees were, by the way. Um, that's what Jesus called them. And, you know, it is interesting too, though, if you think about like the law, like 
you know, typically I always think of the first thing is like the Ten Commandments, but, you know, in the Bible it does have a more broad view of what those, as, as far as it expands beyond the just Ten Commandments, but it is kind of like God's full word about life in general and yeah. his commands, like, overall, you know, and... Um, so an example so, would be like how it talks about letting in the foreigner, like the so- sojourner into like the midst of Israel yeah. and how to go about that, you know, right. or um, what to, to do it. if someone's, it's kind of amazing what is there, like what to do if someone does commit adultery against their um, spouse or what to do if someone's been sexually assaulted. Like it's pretty, there's a, there's a lot of detail, um, but there's also, I think, nuggets in there that can be really useful for us to understand how to interact with one another as human beings you know which sounds really intimidating that we have to do like oh we just had now we have more things that we have to do (laughs) um but you know there's the grace in the whole thing that's obviously for me that jesus you know fulfilled the law as he says and he he died on the cross he lived the perfect life he did everything that the law required and so Therefore, we have forgiveness and salvation. So Mm -hmm. um, it's not just about, like, the the perfection of the law. And I also think that in the last verse is, you know, that's that's kind of the thing that's most shocking is, like, you have to, your righteousness has to surpass or exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees. You know, otherwise you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. So that's kind of scary to think about that, but... You know, it's not saying we should do, now we need to be more perfect, and that's how, and that's why we're better than the Pharisees. Like, that's exactly the opposite of what Jesus is saying. He's saying, you, (laughs) he's saying, like, you can't rely on your perfection to give you eternal life. That's exactly what the Pharisees were doing. And so your, your righteousness has to be Christ's righteousness. Mm -hmm. It can't be just the righteousness that you have within yourself. So it has to exceed, it has to be your, if you, if you had righteousness, which, I mean, you kind of do when you do the right thing and you live your life the right way. Little R, right? Yeah, like little R, right? Like if we're li- so like a little if righteous, need, but. So if you want to go to heaven, you're going to need bigger righteousness big than R that. Righteousness. It's going to need to exceed, it's going to need to be surpassing that bigger. huger mm-hmm. because what you have is not going to be enough. Yeah. So, so exceeding it means, you know bringing on Jesus righteousness into your your life to wash away your sins. I think this is an interesting passage because Jesus is specifically speaking to believers too. Like this is basically a passage for the church. Like hey Christians, like don't think that you're better than the rest of the Christians or better than the rest of the world or better than like he's essentially like showing us that we're not capable of righteousness. Like we we're we're mm-hmm. never going to get there. Um mm-hmm. and so I think anytime you see those like in your face passages from Jesus, he's he's like showing us where we need to be so that he can save. You know, he's showing us like so uh, the law is super important. You can't just throw it out. Um but like I have come, like I've come to do this for you. And I like the that iota, that like language, because it talks about like not one iota will be forgotten. And I once had a professor say, like it's like the period at the end of the sentence or whatever. And um, like not one dot, not one single thing in God's text of his plan of this entire big salvation and world saving stuff will be forgotten. Um, and when we know God intimately through Jesus, that's comforting because he didn't forget any of it. He doesn't forget mm-hmm. when someone sins against us. You know, would mm-hmm. we want the law to be forgotten by our neighbor <laughs> when they're talking to us? Yeah. Probably not. Mm-hmm. You know, we we want justice, like just as much as we want mercy and love because like there are things that are not okay in the world. Um, mm-hmm. And so God doesn't forget. He doesn't miss it. He cares about that dot in your life that's painful. Um, and that's just like really comforting to me today that mm-hmm. he notices. Totally. <clears throat> and he cares about that law as much as he cares about the gospel of grace. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. We're out of time. You want to pray? Right. Sounds good. Yep. Dear God, thank you for um, fulfilling the law. Thank you for your righteousness that you place on us. 
to forgive us of our sins. Help us to continue to seek to do your law, to, to um, live, live holy lives, um, but more than that, to get to know who you are and to help others know who you are as well. Mm-hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See you next time.